We always have a blast chatting with our guests about all sorts of different topics, but sometimes we go off the rails and dig deeper into their automotive and motorsports pasts. As a bonus, let's go behind the scenes with this pit stop minisode for some extra content that didn't quite fit in the main episode. Sit back, enjoy, and remember to like, subscribe, and support Break Fix on Patreon. So two quick things. One, the five yes. car deal. I had more than five cars by the time I was out of high school. Well, we already covered that. Yeah, in a me whole too. Other episode. We're, we're yeah. all different, I think, is the goal of that. It's the average person, not us people. Yeah, the average yeah. person over their lifetime we're has about five cars. Yeah, I have more than five cars now. <laughs> well, don't even get me started. Other than that, I noticed numerous times tonight that the Toyota FJ Cruiser was mentioned. I'm curious, am I the only person that when they see the one that's yellow with the white top on it, thinks really, really small bus? <laughs> no, I can see that. They came in any uh, other color but blue? Oh, yeah, they came in a bunch of colors. Uh, I've never seen them other than blue. I've seen the yellow. I've seen the, the blue. I've seen there's a green one, too. I like the red one. Yeah. They had a bright red. It looked really good and bright red. They're good looking cars, actually. They're pretty sharp, I think. About a year ago, I saw one that was yellow and it had a tire cover over a spare tire on the back. It had a picture of Big Bird and it said Big Bird Short Bus. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Those are harder to get into the back seat than the elements are by a long shot. Oh, I bet. But didn't the element have kind of a little suicide door? So only on one side, though. Only on the passenger side? Yeah. The RX-8 had that, too. Well, better than the RX-8, but similar to the RX-8, yeah. That's kind of like the Pacer. You'll remember the Pacer's mm -hmm. right-hand door was a little longer than the Pacer's left-hand door for easier ingress and egress to the rear. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a weird commercial. Yep. So, Rob, you're, you're not one of the town car fan, are you? I don't. Mine, like I'd take a Caprice all day and I'd love a nice, you know, a donk or a low rider. I'm a big fan of all that kind of stuff. I grew up in a family of German cars and then my buddies would have Mustangs and Trans Ams and stuff, but they were all more sort of svelte than they were sort of the bigger body cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandmother had a, a Dodge Aries. Oh, man. One of the uh, old K car, oh, which Whew. was literally the worst car I've ever driven in my life. And I've driven some doozies and that thing like... You're like, oh, I'm going to take a left. I feel like driving a snowmobile. Like, maybe it'll go left. Maybe it won't go left. We'll find out later and see what it does. You floor it. And while it's floored, you can get out, walk alongside and catch up to it if you wanted to. Like, it was a POS. And so that experience sort of made me going bigger to the Caprices, the Caprice Classics, et cetera, were less of a thing. I mean, I like every one of us, I'm sure, like, you know, a Taurus SHO came out. And I was like, huh, that sounds pretty spectacular. And the bigger GTOs or Holdens, whatever, like, I think those are awesome. Here's a little trivia thing I've learned. I, I've never verified it, but I've learned. The Crown Victoria was the first police vehicle to implement steel shields in the driver and front passenger doors. Exactly what are they for? Oh, bullet resistance. That was Ford that did that. Nobody else did it. You know, Chevy, Plymouth, they're all out there building their little police cars. All they are is a performance package with a sway bar and quick ratio steering. That's it. Ford is the only one who's actually really taken that a lot, lot further. They're amazing cars. They really are. I mean, you can still get like there's a couple F-150s and stuff in that price range in that world too, if you want to go big truck. But I feel like, and your kids are different. They get more space. Like around here, I do not want, our two trips the last two years have been over to Europe where they've gotten an idea of like how small roads get and how big cars should be. And so the idea of like, larger wider car is not something that sort of endears me to being a first-time driver's car i think we've already got the car it's in the garage we can't miss the opportunity to build the ultimate donk caprice classic you take that 10 grand you put it in the rims double dubs baby and there you go you're off to the race she's the coolest cat at school i'm telling you man that's what you need to do dubs and spinners and lights gotta be lights Undercarriage lights. Don't light the wheels. That's carriage. Just undercarriage. One hundred percent. Dubs. Twenty fours. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Nobody uses dubs anymore. You gotta no, go. No, no, Twenty fours. Twenty fours on that thing. When you go to high school, you pull in. It's still. It's dark out in the morning. All through the uh, the winter months, you need to have like the lights so they know you're coming in. Just on the wheels. Get the Spreewell spinners with the yeah, lights. Oh yes. Uh huh. Got to do it. Guarantee. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is every white girl's <laughs> first car dream. One hundred percent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Underglow lights is a big thing with young kids in the local area lately. So it comes around. So when I was when I first had my first car, my buddy down the street had a 25th anniversary edition Trans Am with full neon underneath it, so it looked like it floated with the 18 inch subs in the back. We had four of them in there. I think just basically bounced its way down the road and had to have the windows open or looking for the hatch window out. Yep, yep, exactly. What's that car group? Is it in Houston or whatever down there by you down where they got those things they stick out? 
like their spears. Oh, yeah. A lot of Boda Sear spikes. Real yeah. huge down there in Texas. They tried making them illegal. Yeah, they also have the wire wheels that stick way, way yeah. out. They've got those yeah, things. Yeah. Those, Actually, yeah. I'll tell you a little silly story. Oh, boy. I know, Eric. Just pull my leash when you need to. But I love lowriders. I really do. Mm-hmm. If for no other reason, the paint. Paint that goes into some of these lowriders is just absolutely mind-blowing. Hand-applied, a lot of the detail. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, all hand pinstriped, all that stuff. Do you watch an artist do that? It's spectacular. It's like holy crap, the skill. Oh yeah. And what, what's funny is for me, this is kind of weird. Eric already knows my obsession with, and I don't know if you guys know this guy, Bhagwan, the Rolls Royce guru. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah. So Bhagwan, the great big guru of, up in Oregon, he had ninety-three, I think it was, Rolls Royces, and not all of them, but a good number of them were custom painted to the nines. They were just incredible. I had the chance to talk to painter. His name is Peter. His background was hot rods and speedboats. Well, if you know speedboats of the 70s, they look like bowling balls with designs. I mean, they were incredible. So that was his background. So when he went to work for Bogwan and he started showing Bogwan what else could be done, because Bogwan just said, paint it a different color. I don't want them black. I don't want them silver. I just want them to look heavenly. Not heavenly, that wasn't his word, but he wanted them to look surreal. So a few of them were painted solid colors, and then he started showing the Bogwan what can be done, and that's where the really, really cool Rolls Royces came from. Anyway, I got to attend the auction where those cars were sold when Bogwan was kicked out of the country and everything was seized. As a car guy from birth... Those Rolls Royces, I mean, they did everything to me emotionally. One side of me was saying, what sacrilege son of a gun would paint a Rolls Royce like this? Who would do this? But then another side of me, more the hot rod DNA from my dad, was saying, these things are awesome. This is so cool. And then where I was sold, stupid little, however old I was, I don't know, 10 years old, 9 years old, cars are all lined up at this auction site. Bright sun, Newport Beach, incredible day. I still remember it very vividly. I remember taking my hand, not knowing it was really against the rules, and just running it across the hood. Two things struck me. One, there were no hitches. You weren't feeling where one coat of paint met the other coat of paint. You weren't feeling it. It was all one sheet of glass. And number two, despite sitting in the hot beach sun, they weren't that hot. There was a coolness to them. Very, very interesting. Well, 40 years later, getting to talk to to Peter, the guy who painted them, I told him about that. He said it had to do with the thickness of the paint. He said the paint on those Rolls Royces, if you were to pull those off, you're probably looking at about 40 pounds worth of paint all by itself. It, It was incredible. Actually, maybe that wasn't Peter who said that. Maybe that was somebody else. But anyway, that, I guess, helped absorb the, okay, Eric, I'll shut up. Anyway, so, yeah, custom paints, all this stuff, lowriders, going to William's point of those wire wheels. Okay, I'll shut up. I know, Eric, you can thank me later for not continuing. Yeah, so... Refresh me on it because I got a little bit sidetracked with... <laughs> was your choice of getting her, like, having her get into the truck first, was that, like, in an automatic, was that based on how you started driving or was it something different that's okay so other than the whole being bullied around type thing this is something i learned with my daughter especially since she started out driving the truck is the fact that her learning to drive something big i thought it would be easier for her to go something small but for her like going to something small kind of freaked out because like the whole judgment of everything was different it's good in the fact that she can judge because she has so much more space on each side and behind her in front of her in the car compared to the truck but I'd hate to imagine the reverse of her if she would have started out in the car and then went to the truck of what she may have mm-hmm. possibly hit. So that is one good thing with a new driver. If you start them out in something bigger, then if they go down to something smaller, then I think they're going to have a better awareness of their surroundings and size. If you can learn to parallel park one of those trucks and navigate through parking lots, like then when you get something smaller, it's easy. But vice versa is where you see people get into all those little fender benders for no reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's actually a similar to like my thought of let's get a manual and not an automatic because you can't go. The other way doesn't work, but I think you're right. Going big to small is easier than small to big, same way. Yeah, well, look at how many drivers are out there who went from small to big. You know, how many drivers out there started out in Honda Prelude? Then they got married, then they had a family. Bam, now they've got an Escalade. It's mind-boggling to go from one to the other. Now, was there a car in between that was maybe a midsize that kind of trained you up to the Escalade? I don't know. But I think there's a lot of drivers out there who are driving big vehicles, but they were trained on, taught on a little car. And and I, I see that a lot. To a degree, I, I disagree. Like I've seen my wife go from a Honda Odyssey to a 
full size frame on SUV and she definitely drives differently as a result of that. She's not going to listen to this podcast, so I don't have to worry about any fallout from these comments. And <laughs> and she has kind of classic little person syndrome, maybe. And so, you know, gets in a giant SUV, drives differently. I mean, I think the number one thing I keep going to these cars get bullied. Let's face it. It's not the cars bullying the cars. It's the drivers. Yeah. And that's one thing I've always tried to impress upon Caitlin is, I mean, she's seen it. Even the flex once in a while, you get a big enough F-350 or a big enough Silverado or Ram, and I'm just not going fast enough in the fast lane. You know, 90 is just not fast enough. So you have a choice. If you can pull to the right, and that's one thing Texans take very seriously, is get out of the fast lane. They take it real seriously out here. So yeah, move to the right, get out of the fast lane, give this person the road. If you can't, there's another way to do it, which is back off throttle. Force the guy behind you to follow your rules because you're in the lead. Yeah. They don't pay for your insurance. They don't pay for your car repairs. They don't pay for your hospital bills. Back them off. We've done it in the Honda. I've done it in the Fiat. I think my greatest achievement in doing this was when I first got it, convertible top window was completely browned out. You could not see through that thing. And there was no right-hand side view mirror. So the trick I learned was if I need to make that lane change, how do I know when it's safe? Well, the thing was I found the car that was ahead of me and pass it. Now I know there's nothing behind me except that guy. And I should be able to move over. So use your signal, slowly start easing over. What he didn't tell you is it was at 86,000 RPM in second gear trying to get that Fiat to move, <laughs> but that's okay. Nothing ever happens fast in a Fiat, really nothing. But if you can get past that car fast enough to where you see it in your left-hand rearview mirror, now you can move over. But in that time... Did somebody sneak up on their right and come in? You see what I'm saying? So you've always got to be aware of that. That's why I always made that lane change really slow. I got to tell you, I was so proud of myself for figuring that out. That was one of those moments where, wow, hey, did something cool. And as long as you're in control of that, as long as you maintain your mentality, you're going to tick that guy off behind you. But that's fine. I don't care about them. I care about me. I care about not getting into a wreck. So that's one thing I've been trying to teach Caitlin from the beginning. So whether she ends up with a Fiat or she end up with an Element or she end up with, you know, an F-350, whatever, she has that mentality of, you know what, you're bullying me and I can't do anything to help you right now. So I'm going to back off. Yeah, I'm going to force you a little bit to cool down. I do think of that as like as a legitimate concern. Honda Element's not going to do that, but... Maybe one of the other cars does. I don't know. And I don't know if any of this rambling makes sense. I can see you guys starting to snore not off. All that being said, Dan, you want to add to it. Go ahead. Real quick thing Don was talking about is driving that truck that time he floored it. We mentioned earlier with cars getting out on the highway and stuff. My daughter was, when she did finally start driving, she was so set on not taking the highway unless I was with her. And I didn't know this until afterwards. Everywhere she went, when she put it in GPS, she had to avoid highway. So everywhere she was going, I was wondering why I was taking her so long to get places. And then one day I was driving her down to Gaithersburg to Children's Hospital for an appointment. I would tell her, I was like, throw the address in your phone and we're going. And she's like, dad, it's going to take us like two and a half hours to get there. I was like, it should only take us 45. I was like, why is it? Then I realized she had it set to avoid highway and it had a zigzag the way down through Maryland to get there. And I'm like, it should not take that long. But it's one of those things where <laughs> hopefully your daughter won't encounter something that freaks her out like it did my daughter. And it'll be something where you just taught you to respect the vehicle and you ease down. Right. Believe me, for a long time, I was the king of no freeways. I didn't want to go on the freeways. I wanted to do surface. It served in the purpose, which was I was fantastic at getting around town without the freeways. So in LA, freeways jam up real easy and real, you know, you sit there. So in a way, my 16, 17 year old self who didn't like going on freeways, it worked out really well because I learned how to get around Southern California without them. But I don't think, you know, an element, I don't think she'll have that floor in it scaring her. No. But it's the issue of some other idiot driver out there. And sadly, right. as a society, our driver abilities have went downhill in the past decade, horribly, in my opinion. Having just driven in Ireland for a bunch of days with my kids, 
Last year, I drove in Scotland as well. To your point, the quality of driving over there, you're on these roads that are like one lane roads here and they're two full-size sedans and they don't slow down at all. I mean, they're doing 60, 70 miles an hour. And they're just like, yep, we just trust that you know the exact width of your car, put it right up where your mirror is just touching the grass that's over here, that the height, you know, things. And I'll do the same and right by. And it's mm-hmm. this, and like the level of pure trust in your own ability and the person of your approaching's ability at all times i was amazed by and my kids were noticing it too like because i'll yell in dc when it's an obvious like two cars can pass and i'll watch somebody stop and i'm like why are you a, an idiot like there's plenty of room for two cars my car's twice as wide as yours i'm driving my wife's ascent there's more than enough room for your little car to get by here next to mine like why can't you figure this out and so my kids have heard me say that and they see the driving in europe and they're like we first got back and they're just like dad this road is so wide Mm -hmm. to your point it's that realization of like there's so many idiots out there but Mm -hmm. it's an american thing you go over about over to europe and it's not that way right i mean those those folks have that sort of understanding of knowing your own widths of cars and such and it's funny you bring that up because coming from la not that the roads are comparable to ireland or england or any of that stuff but they are smaller than here in texas even the lanes on the freeway are wider here in texas than they are back in southern california or just california in general And it is amazing to watch somebody in a little Nissan Sentra need the entire road to make a right-hand turn off of one road onto the other, and you're coming the opposite direction. They're coming around that corner, and you're like, how much road do you need for that stupid car? I mean, I hate to be the bully here, but I'll tell you, when I start seeing that, when they're on my side of the road, I do what your Irish friends do. I snuzzle right up next to it. And I got to tell you, when you see the eyes of a driver of a Sentra coming head-on with a flex no, I'm not an F-350, but I'm still scary compared to that Sentra. Uh, but you're right. And it, it goes back to what I've been saying. And it's a losing battle, I'm sure. But try to train the drivers around you. Try to get them to learn a little bit of patience. Try to get them to rein in that right-hand turn. You don't need the whole road to come around the right-hand turn. And if you do, slow down. Because you're probably going too fast. And that's why you need all that space. True story here, and it was actually with the Honda, not the Flex, which may have been a good thing because it's a little more athletic. Same right-hand turn I'm thinking of. The guy came so far around, I went to the left. I went on his side of the road because he had so much of my road, there was nowhere for me to go. So it was either smack him almost perfectly head on or take over his side of the road because he's taken over mine. This is what I'm talking about with these people down here. They are just out of their mind. They really are. And maybe, you know, a lot of people have brought this up to me. Maybe COVID had a lot to do with this. You know, we had our lockdown and for some reason we come out. Now we're all impatient. Now we're all in a hurry. Why that is what happened psychologically to some of us, I don't know. I really don't. Maybe that did play a part in how some of us are driving. I don't know. But I I see your point, though. I do. And and you're right. I don't think that Honda is going to terrify her. You know, it's funny being a car guy. I'm sure all of you probably experience this once in a while. Sometimes you feel kind of alone you know that you're the only one in the family or you're the only one in the house who really likes these cars and maybe you start to question yourself what am i doing why, why do i have these cars this is insane nobody else likes them nobody else blah 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 my wife is very supportive of them she doesn't care for them she doesn't like them she's not a car gal she has the accord point a point b no problems drama free she loves it but i don't understand her obsession with disney i like disney too but I mean, she takes it to a whole other level but we support each other in in what we like. And I think Caitlin's of that genre where she, when I get out there and start polishing on the Caprice, it surprises the hell out of me still that I'll look up and there's Caitlin standing there with a rag saying, do you want me to buff while you polish? Sure, go for it. You know, then she wants to learn how to polish. Then she wants to learn, what are you doing with that blue tape? What are you doing? You know, and so you're slowly starting to show her these things. And I think just the fact that she likes that brings back around that element in that this is a car she can probably have fun with. But oddly enough, my little girls, I think my eldest is infatuated with my station wagon. She loves going out in that thing. She's big enough to sit in the front seat now, which we did that a couple of times on some B roads. And she thought it was fantastic. She loves the way it sounds. You can throw it in a corner and, you know, 200 horsepower, who cares, right? All day long. My little one, though, she told me even the other day, she's like, Dad, do you remember the yellow car that we had? Like, what (laughs) happened to the yellow car? This is, by the way, for fans of the show, this is the Aztec that we were fostering for a year because I didn't own it. I just want to be very clear that I didn't own it. Yes, you did. Don't deny it. I agree with Dan. You never signed it. the title it wasn't mine <laughs> doesn't matter you owned it it was a common law marriage it was a common law marriage common law car 
It was gone off. You owned it. So anyway, <laughs> but my little one really liked that car because she's like, Dad, and it had the seats in the back and the way it looked, and she liked the yellow. And She, she wants to cook meth. Yeah, well, I guess, but she was really attracted to it. So it's really funny to see them already establishing their preferences at 10 and 7. And, and that's pretty cool, right? But how is that going to play out to Dan's point where his daughter was at 12 and 13, where she is today? You know, those kinds of things. Again, though, remember the yellow truck. Dan, you brought up the word gun shy, which is really interesting because my father was very, very, very big gun enthusiast. And one of the first guns I shot, I was five or six years old, gave me such a kick in the shoulder, I literally cried. I was so scared of that gun. And to this day, I have so much respect for guns. You have no idea. A little 22 piece shooter. I have so much respect for that thing because of that little boy in me who learned on a 30 out 6 You're going to learn baptism by fire. So it is kind of funny you brought that up. I constantly think the same thing. First gun I fired, damn near broke my little shoulder. First car that I drove on my own, as my own, with my license, it scared the hell out of me. And I had more respect for that thing through our life together until it was sold to my brother-in-law and my sister. So maybe the Z28 would have, you know, the same effect. I had a 94 Z28 when I was a teenager. I, I've spent too much money on cars my entire life. And I've always owned cars that had far more capability than I had talent. And it's never scared me enough. I'll just put it that way. Nice. All right, Don, 10 grand. What are you buying? Um, yeah, and there's so many great cars out there. That, I mean, I'll tell you one that I, oh, I really like. and it, it, I, I'm not going to go Chrysler TC by Maserati, although that is a wonderful option, and you can get a wonderful car for $10,000 that'll serve you very well. But that aside, you know, any of the, uh, the F-150s, you know, and I'm thinking of the short bed single cab, similar to the Chevys, similar to and the Dodgers, for some reason, are always a little bit more expensive. And I don't know why that is, because I don't think they're as well built as the Ford or the Chevy. Like the yellow truck, you've got a lot of power. You're going to have a lot of fun. It's a car you can mess around with, bang up a little bit. You're not going to worry too much about it. It's a truck that can take it. It's a truck you can abuse it if you're that mindset. And yeah, you, you can move furniture when you need to move furniture you know so it, it's kind of hard to go wrong with a truck but there are so many options out there but honestly four grand yeah that's a lot of money to spend on a water pump and i i have a feeling just i'm a member of a i don't know what you call them flex group on facebook great group of people most of them aren't you president <laughs> yeah that's it i know right everybody thinks i'm the president of the aztec club now he's 51 percent 51%. Yeah. Well, here's the sick thing. I've had two flexes in my life. There's a guy up there who's had nine. I'm like, wow, you just blew my mind. But anyway, what I'm getting at is a lot of these guys do their own work. I mean, I've seen pictures. They got the whole front end off the car. They got the engine apart. They're doing, I'm thinking that is the biggest nightmare in the world to me to see. I can't, yeah. no, I don't want to see any of that stuff. And my second mm -hmm. black car, which you can also surprisingly get for under 10 grand is the Cadillac ATS two liter turbo, which was shared with the Camaro, which comes in a manual. So chew on that one for a while. Plenty of performance options, despite the two liter turbo Camaro not being that exciting compared to, let's say, the EcoBoost Mustang. But there's a lot of play space with the Cadillac ATS because there's a lot of things that can be swapped in from the ATS V, even though they don't have the same power plant. So, and it's a very good looking car. It's handsome if you want something a little bit more understated than the Genesis Coupe. But both of those would be my choice, you know, as an enthusiast. All right. I'm just waiting for the outtakes where all I see is pictures of Eric going, <sighs> Uh-huh. Yeah. He did it three times in that yeah. sequence. It was really impressive each time. It was like a big yeah, the middle one was definitely like a full on like, oh crap, I didn't get my <laughs> it's No, it's well okay. Done. It's okay. I think Don Hicken with those small silences just for that reaction. I, I think so too. It's so well done. I just need an outtake of Brad, I'll take care of that for us later. We'll get the outtakes of that. Uh -huh. Now that we've gotten our pit stop out of the way, let's get back <laughs> on track. <laughs> and if you'd like to continue the conversation or expand on some of the topics here. Don't be shy. Check out our break slash fix podcast, Facebook group, or Discord, where you can get in contact with the panelists you hear. God, oh my, I'm fucking this up all over the place. You know, he's supposed to proofread this stuff before he does it. Go ahead. I proofread the intro, not the outro. I like the break slash fix. That's yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I thought I was reading the web address like I do in the drive through He's Ron Burgundy. Like I know. Seriously. <laughs> Rob, we can't hear you. Matt, can't hear you now.
You disappeared. We still need to do the toe rig. What should I buy? Yeah, we got a lot of them Ooh. still to do. Yeah. I think we should do a show dedicated all to the Chrysler TC. Nope, that's not going to happen. That's a, Well, it, I wrote it down. It's at the very, very bottom of the list somewhere <laughs> down there. I can't see it anymore. <laughs> all right. Eric, I'm not sure I can talk anymore. I know how annoyed you get when I talk, and I think I should just shut up and sit over here in the corner. My opinion doesn't matter. Thanks, guys. Very cool. Well, thank you, guys. This has been helpful. Go ahead, Brad. Continue. We hope you enjoyed another awesome episode of Break Fix Podcast, brought to you by Grand Tory Motorsports. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or get involved, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Grand Touring Motorsports. And if you'd like to learn more about the content of this episode, be sure to check out the follow-on article at gtmotorsports.org. We remain a commercial-free and no annual fees organization through our sponsors, but also through the generous support of our fans, families, and friends through Patreon. For as little as $2.50 a month, you can get access to more behind-the-scenes action, additional pit stop minisodes, and other VIP goodies, as well as keeping our team of creators fed on their strict diet of Fig Newtons, Gumby Bears, and Monster. So consider signing up for Patreon today at www.patreon.com forward slash GT Motorsports. And remember, without you, none of this would be possible.